Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering DEI. Federal judge rules against DEI training, says it creates a hostile work environment. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. This is a big one coming from LegalInsurrection.com. Federal judge rules that DEI and CRT trainings and policies can violate federal law. Somewhat surprisingly, Obama appointee Wendy Beetlestone holds that constant drumbeat of anti-white DEI CRT rhetoric can create a hostile work environment in violation of federal law. In an important development in the battle against diversity, equity, and inclusion and critical race theory, a federal judge has ruled that DEI CRT trainings and policies can be so one-sided and discriminatory that they can constitute a hostile work environment for white employees subjected to them. An Obama-appointed judge, so you know this is really getting out of control, ruled in favor of a Pennsylvania college professor who sued his employer over critical race theory trainings he alleged were anti-white, including one that said white teachers are a problem, according to a lawsuit. Finally, some sanity. A former professor at Penn State Abington, Zach DiPiero, sued for race discrimination after he was allegedly subjected to training that the English language is racist and the embodiment of white supremacy, along with additional tirades against white people in professional development sessions and meetings, according to his lawsuit. Apparently, this caused DiPiero significant trauma. Quote, there's a constant ticker tape, like a newsreel. I see, I hear that disgusting evil phrase, white teachers are a problem, he said. I wish I could get it out of my head, but I can't. I still wake up with this stuff. I still go to bed with this stuff. It still bothers me. It changed me in a lot of ways. You often hear that hardship leads to greater character. While that might be true, it certainly comes at a cost, he said. So after resigning his professorship at Penn State, DiPiero brought a suit against the university in June of last year in federal court in the Eastern District of Pennsylvania. The case was assigned to federal judge Wendy Beetlestone, who was appointed to the federal bench by Barack Obama in 2014. Penn State's first action in the case was to file a motion to dismiss, which Judge Beetlestone recently denied. If she had approved that motion to dismiss, it would have been the end of that case. But she did not. According to Fox Digital, Judge Wendy Beetlestone of the Eastern District of Pennsylvania ruled on January 11th that Professor DiPiero had solid grounds to proceed in his race-based discrimination lawsuit despite Penn State's request for it to be dismissed. Beetlestone said that discussing the influence of racism on our society does not violate federal law. But when considering whether to allow the professor's suit to progress, she considered the type of CRT training used at Penn State Abington. Well, training on concepts such as critical race theory can contribute positively to form a healthy and inclusive work environment. But the way these conversations are carried out in the workplace matters. When employers talk about race, any race, with a constant drumbeat of essentialist, deterministic, and negative language, they risk liability under federal law. A review of the court's order denying dismissal reveals serious allegations. DiPiero describes a series of university-sanctioned professional development meetings and comments from supervisors that addressed racial issues in sweeping absolute terms. First, he alleged that Penn State instructed him to incorporate race into his grading to avoid being tarred as a racist. Then DiPiero alleges that he had to discard his own race-neutral grading rubric and instead penalize students academically on the basis of their race. This occurred before the George Floyd hysteria in 2020. After that, things allegedly got exponentially worse. According to DiPiero, this atmosphere only became more heated after the death of George Floyd in 2020. Amidst the mass protest movement that erupted that summer, defendant Damian Fernandez, then chancellor of Penn State Abington, called all faculty and staff to join a conversation on racial climate on Zoom. Defendant Alina Wong, assistant vice provost for educational equity, hosted the event. DiPiero experienced discomfort in a discussion about the scope of systemic racism. Wong led the faculty in a breathing exercise in which she instructed the white and non-black people of color to hold it just for a little longer to feel George Floyd's pain. 
Also, defendant Anissa Smith, Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, sent an email to all employees calling on white people to feel terrible about their own internalized white supremacy and to hold other white people accountable. Well, it's good to know that Anissa is now being held accountable through this lawsuit. See how she likes that. DiPiero further alleges that he then had to sit through three more events that singled out white instructors. First, DiPiero's supervisor, defendant Liliana Naden, chair of the English department, and another professor led one of a series of monthly professional development meetings, which as a full-time member of the writing faculty, DiPiero was expected to attend. In the workshop, which was on multiculturalism, the facilitators presented examples of problematic comments that a teacher could make to a student. Every hypothetical faculty member was white. Next, in a training video called White Teachers Are a Problem, the training's facilitator intimated that white colleagues should feel like the problem. The facilitator encouraged viewers to feel uncomfortable about race. Nadan and another colleague had hyped the video repeatedly. Third, Nadam imposed on the writing faculty a presentation and dialogue about critical race theory and anti-racism that attacked race neutrality, equal opportunity, objectivity, colorblindness, and merit, and condemned white self-interest. The chair of a major university's English department allegedly decries, among other things, equal opportunity, objectivity, and merit. Scary if the allegation is true, and of course it's true. He's not going through this lawsuit for his health. He's going through this lawsuit to stop this, to end this nonsense. There's more. 2021 brought more of the same. At an anti-racism pedagogy meeting in early January, Nadan said that she was thinking about grading as an anti-racist act, which DiPiero took to mean that teachers must apply different grading standards on the basis of race. That spring, the department put on another training presentation about white language supremacy as well. You can imagine the evils of spelling correctly. And the author states here, Honestly, I cannot fathom why or how anyone would attend or work at a university under these conditions. So DiPiero complained to Penn State. And did they fix the problem? No, they allegedly blamed DiPiero. Defendant Carmen Borges, Associate Director of Penn State's Affirmative Action Office, asked to meet with DiPiero to discuss his complaint. At that meeting, she responded to DiPiero's concern that he had been made to feel humiliated, disgraced, harassed, and discriminated against by telling him that there's a problem with the white race and he should broaden his perspective. Until you get it, she told DiPiero, he should continue to attend anti-racism workshops. By November 2021, Borges had resolved DiPiero's initial complaint and had decided that no further action would be taken. She concluded that the white teachers are a problem training, while it may be offensive to him, does not constitute discrimination towards you as an individual and does not rise to a violation of the university's non-discrimination policy. Can you imagine what they would have to do to their white teachers to rise to their non-discrimination policy? I don't even know what they'd have to do if not this. Judge Beetlestone disagreed. Take it together, these allegations plausibly amount to pervasive harassment that has stated a plausible claim for a hostile work environment based on race. To be clear, discussing in an educational environment the influence of racism on our society does not necessarily violate federal law. But the way these conversations are carried out in the workplace matters. When employers talk about race, any race, with a constant drumbeat of an essentialist, deterministic, and negative language, they risk liability under federal law. And when there's liability under federal law, it means they can be sued. And that is what this is, a lawsuit because of what they did to this white teacher. For the reasons set forth above, Penn State's motion to dismiss will be denied with respect to the hostile work environment theory of liability pressed under Title VII and other federal statutes. Fox Digital summarizes, DiPiero's attorney at FAIR, Michael Thad Allen, reacted to the ruling saying, quote, the opinion is clear that you cannot discriminate on the basis of race by wrapping up racist stereotypes as anti-racist, which is what Penn State did to Zach DiPiero. The university released a statement to Fox News Digital that said Penn State does not generally comment on ongoing litigation. In Ohio, America First Legal is helping a professor get justice with Ohio Northern University. From America First Legal, 
America First Legal Defense tenured professor and sues Ohio Northern University for terminating him for objecting to illegal DEI hiring. America First Legal filed an amended complaint in a lawsuit against Ohio Northern University on behalf of legal scholar, author, and tenured professor at the university. In 2023, Ohio Northern University decided to terminate Dr. Gerber's employment. Egregiously, on April 14, 2023, school security, with support from armed police, removed Dr. Gerber while he was teaching his law school class. They escorted him to the office of Dean Charles H. Rose III, a defendant in the case who told Dr. Gerber that he must either resign or face termination proceedings. Dr. Gerber learned that the hiring committee for the new law faculty had chosen candidates based on their race and sex. Dr. Gerber objected to the ONU's woke DEI-driven hiring practices and made complaints about it to the university administration and the EEOC, the federal organization that reviews these kinds of discriminatory complaints. Dr. Gerber refused to resign. The university then commenced termination proceedings against him. Neither the university nor any of its employees told Dr. Gerber what he was accused of having done, notwithstanding his contractual right as a tenured faculty member to be informed, quote, reasonably and particularly of the accusations against him. The Ohio State Court issued a temporary restraining order against ONU, requiring them to notify Dr. Gerber of what he was alleged to have done. A tenured professor is not like someone working at a fast food joint, and no disrespect to anybody working anywhere, but a tenured professor has made a commitment to a university, and the university has made that same commitment back that it's going to be a long-term relationship. They can't just fire him because they don't like his politics. When the hearing eventually went forward, the university ambushed Dr. Gerber with new accusations, denied Dr. Gerber his contractual right to confront the witnesses against him, and made Dr. Gerber subject to a sham hearing with a predetermined outcome. In the midst of this, the university defamed Dr. Gerber. It issued a press release, which is a public statement, falsely labeling Dr. Gerber a threat to the physical safety of faculty, staff, and students. This is simply an escalation in the culture war. Even tenured professors will no longer be tolerated and will be terminated if they refuse to bend the knee to the current woke ideology. America First Legal is proud to represent Dr. Gerber and fight this unlawful termination. And here's a statement from Nicholas Barry, America First Senior Legal Counsel. Everyone understands the purpose of tenure is to protect academic freedom. It permits academics to teach, think, and speak in accordance with their conscience. The culture war has invaded every American institution. Now even right-leaning tenured professors are on the chopping block for standing up against the hive mind. ONU failed to give Dr. Gerber a fair hearing and violated the terms of his tenure contract because he objected. We must insist on the rule of law. It cannot continue to be rules for thee, but not for me. And that's another great action by America First Legal. They're involved in a lot of lawsuits and a lot of complaints to try to roll back DEI, CRT, and unfair treatment of people based on race. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.